So this was Guy's first time to the city of Chicago. What was on the to-do list once you got here? Uh, my to-do list consisted of preparing for the show, unpacking the shit, getting up, and uh, eating a lot of food. I wanted to eat as much Chicago food as I can. So we got Mr. Beefs, we got some Geno's, we got some fucking hot dogs with everything, we got Polish food, we got some Greek jam. So that was, that was I mean, yeah, the, the three primary things were the show, getting up, and eating. How did the two shows, uh, the one at Pond Works and the one at Maxwell Collette, how did those come about? Uh, I, it was actually kind of out of the, out of the blue. Well, it went from like a, a hint to like a bam, like a like a. It went from like a, a murmur to a real blast immediately. Like it, um, basically, what happened was I've known Seth for a minute, just in New York, and I, you know, I met him originally at Brooklyn Night Gallery, and then I met him further. You know, got more acquainted with him at my show, and they came to my block party event. Um, so, and I was seeing him around. And he talked about how he was talking to Maxwell Colette, and he was actually digging my shit. Um, and of course, I knew the sticker project because they did the stickers for my, me and Stan and Lex. Um, so yeah, it went from being this thing that was kind of up in the air, and just you know, it felt like it'd be in the future. I was even thinking like 2012. Like he's saying. If it, you know, if it's if it's some preliminary, just you know, talking like super, just casual, you think it's like totally gonna be down the line, and then they hit me up a couple months, like I think about two and a half months ago. Yeah, was it December? January. First brought up, it was January. January. Like like January. Mid January. Uh, first January. Oh, okay, right after New Year's. Um, so yes, January second, they hit me up. And then it was like grind mode. I like knew I had two and a half months, and um, it went from being something that was speculative to being completely concrete. They hit me up, and it was like they gave me like a f- f- fucking phenomenal proposal. And I was just super amped from the get go. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's kind of how it came to, came to be. I know that Nick and Seth had a conversation with Oliver, and they just ran with it. Sick. So your dad was also at the show. Um, yeah. you, he seemed really happy and supportive of what you've been doing. Uh, you've mentioned to me that you've gone out and pasted stuff up with him. Like, yeah. What's up with that? Um, I've done a 100-foot roller with my dad off the Pulaski Bridge. Um, it says Deep Gaia. My boy's brother got into an accident right before we went out. Like, literally, he got a text message 15 minutes before we were about to head out saying he was going to the hospital. So he had to dip to pick up his brother in Scarsdale. So I was alone on this mission, and we you know, be scheming on this fucking spot forever. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it alone, man. So my dad drove me out. You know, he, it was mad funny. We roll up at this spot. You know, it was a second. It was a second story kind of thing. You know, go on the rooftop and you hit the second story of the other adjacent building. Uh, it faces the Pulaski Bridge and in you know, Queens Bound, you can see it better. It's in Greenpoint, and he like you know he's standing in front of me. He goes, "Oh man, how are you gonna get up there?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be really easy." And the windows had bars on it, so I just scaled up to the top. And then he, yeah, he put the bucket. You know, on the edge of the pole, and I'd hoist it up and shit, and I'd get on the top of the roof. I'm like, yo, Dad, thanks. I'll see you later. Have a good night. He's like, all right, man, have a good night. He drives away, and then I fucking, I'm stranded on this roof without a quarter or keys or anything. I can't open up this paint bucket, and I'm fucking tripping on this spot. I'm like, no, no. I'm trying to find a ledge, trying to find all this shit. Nothing is working. I can't even get it open my nails. So I call him again. He drives back and throws a screwdriver up for me. And then I rocked it. And it's been running for two years now. So, like, like last week, or, yeah, like last week, we went to Cabrini Green, and you pulled some stuff with some construction gear. Word. And, like, what, like, why did you decide to do that? And, like, why Cabrini Green? Like, what, what made, like, out of all the spots in Chicago, like, you were seeing really hyped to, like, you wanted that spot. Well, Cabrini 
is like the most infamous project. You know, it it it, it is the image of the end of modernism essentially and you know you have Perudigo and you have all these other spots and I mean anywhere in the Midwest and the West Coast and even Newark all these high rises are being destroyed and it is it's the conclusion to a philosophy so that really was it was the pinnacle moment like of this of this place that will you know be gone it'll disappear it'll be it obviously be in, in history and it can't be completely erased, but it'll be condos now, and it'll be completely different. And then that strange, um, that just that strange situation next to the Gold Coast will no longer exist. Like the ghetto will not be there anymore. And um, the lion rabbit is just a poetic symbol of um, like a Corbusian philosophy regarding architecture. It's like super like socialistically hierarchical you know like like uh, and what i mean by that is just like he was coming from a socialist country you know swiss architect and was producing work that was um you know he said that the the architect was the visionary you know the architect is the lion and the people are the rabbits so you know so you have this genius architect or this this one designer who designs the landscape and how people live and corporately move through space according to this dude's plan. And then everyone just follows it. You, know, you live here, you work there, you move in this manner. Um, so it's just been a good little thing that's super innocuous and sort of ambiguous um, and is is accessible. You know, it's just a lion rabbit. It's a strange thing. But, you know, it's not, like, really academic or really didactic. It's just this lion rabbit. And I've been putting it up around, like, projects throughout... Um, America, or trying to, that's my plan, so Chicago was the first time I got to do it, like, actually on an abandoned project, um, and they're hard to come by now, because they're all being torn down really, really quickly, so that was the shit, that was, like, the ultimate moment, that was just, it had to happen, and then we hit, you know, the projects by Midway and the projects on the south side, so it was, like, it, the, the Chicago got a good lion rabbit, uh, exposure. <laughs> so now that the shows are done, you're gonna go back to school and like, what, what, school. like what's next? Like what's next for for Gaia? Uh, what is next? Uh, the next things going on are speaking in Haverford next week in Pennsylvania. I'm gonna see my mom in Philly. I might put up some work out there. Come back. Um, do the opening of this awesome exhibition that my school is putting on called Baltimore Open City been helping out with that and then you know really try to focus on thesis and after that collaborate with the mural arts commission in philadelphia state my mom's spot out there and just prepare for two shows in europe and then just try to travel my ass off and in between in august go to atlanta and go to albany with my boys and just you know get up on the way down and just try to get them out there and then do the living walls thing um, so we got a couple months, but I'll be chilling in Baltimore for the summer, just straight lamping, like not really doing anything for like June, July, August. Weird. Hell yeah. Cool. All right. Thank right thanks, man. man. Appreciate yeah. it. No doubt. Cool. But God.